Hey there, this is Teacup Lion, and here is another overview of my hair pattern. A few things to consider before you start the overall design. Um, I have a drawing of how I want my hair to look before I actually start making it. I'm going to consider the general shape and the general um, fur direction, and I'll build up several smaller pieces to go along with it. So, when you are figuring out your placement, you want to give as much visibility as possible. Try not to obstruct the eye if you can. Also, if you are having it go to the side of the head, try to minimize the weight. Make it smaller, thinner, or whatever you can. Because if you make big, heavy hair, the head will lean sideways on the wearer and look pretty terrible. I know that from personal experience. So to begin, uh, I have hair one as the largest piece. You can honestly lay this many different ways to get different looks. Mohawk, etc. Um, for my green fox, I wanted it to really puff up. So I folded it like so. And I hand sewed the ears to the hair piece to give some extra, what is that, two to three inches up to start with. You can fold the hair this way as well and create all sorts of angles. Um, let's see. I also created a roll of fur underneath at the very end because I wanted to lift it up more. So I just got a little scrap, whip stitched the edge, sewed it right here underneath the hair and that lifted it another inch and a half. So if you need to adjust the shape of the base, say you also want to create volume, maybe the ears are farther apart, you are going to modify your hair piece as such with pen before cutting your fur. The shapes are gonna be very forgiving because it's all layered together. So what I did for mine is I aligned all the pieces before sewing anything. I started with this one. And the thread I used was dual duty or I also recommend embroidery floss because you're going to want it to be stronger than regular thread. Regular thread will want not work for this. The hair will come off pretty quickly. And then I created layers using the other pieces. Hair two. I think mine I actually folded like so to create additional volume. And after you brush the fur for each piece, it's going to create even more volume. So you'll get a pretty thick layer with all these pieces. Hair two, hair three, went this way, hair four. I wanted to create a bang look, so I started building it up over here. And then hair five was last. It covered this section. And you can really change these shapes to create different shapes. It's really versatile and easy to do that. Um, then you're going to want to figure out if you want your hair to be permanent or not. I have removable hair for my other suit, and I just safety pin it on whenever I'm ready to wear it. That's because it's too heavy and not really comfortable, so I use it only for photo shoots. Um, so you sew the base pattern on with just a few tacking stitches. That's just a simple sewing stitch. And I left the thread really long so I could just continue building it up. Then I'd sew this one on, a couple stitches just around the base. Continue with the next couple stitches and I am not even sewing these hair pieces to the base that's just too thick to pass through I'm just sewing them to the next piece down and I continued with my bang pieces attaching them over here and over here and I did not sew all the way down because I wanted them floppy so that when the character walks it goes up and down a little bit so I only attached at the back uh, you will want to stress test your stitches by just gently pulling to make sure the knots don't pop through. And you will also want to treat your knots with super glue or, oops, yeah, super glue or a fray check that 
essentially glues it so that it won't unravel. And make your knots larger than normal. I usually do a triple knot just so it won't be too small and pop through the fur accidentally. That is about it. Hope that helps.